Hi, I'm Terry Mann. And I am Charlotte Amboise. And we are in Pippin. She plays Vestrada. That's right, and he plays Charlemagne. And we are here at Broadway.com to... To answer your questions. All of them. Oh okay, gosh. this is from Tina. Mm. What costume did you like better and why? Rum Tum Tugger or Frankenfurter? <laughs> I liked Frankenfurter. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, because, you know, every man should know what it feels like to walk in four-inch heels. All night. This is from Brandon. If you could play any of your husband's roles, which would it be and why? <laughs> oh my God. I'm trying to remember what roles. Okay, well, I, you know what? Now that I think about it, I would say Frankenfurter. <laughs> because I can walk yeah, in four inch heels you can really walk in, well. Yes, you can. I can. Okay. Um, and you coming down in that cage with those those fishnets, you know, that's a, what an entrance Best that was. Best entrance on Broadway. That was a great entrance. Um, is the relationship dynamic between Charles, he's Charles, and Fistrada, that's me, in any way modeled after the one you share with your wife? No, not at all. No, I, I'm the, yes, it is. What am I saying? Of course it is. Yeah, it is, kind of. Yeah, it is. <laughs> she seduces me into doing everything. Everything. And, and whatever I'm, yeah. Okay. Even at home. Yeah. It's and, true. Yeah, okay, it's true. Okay. I'm admitting it now. Okay, good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Chris. Okay. You are my favorite Roxy Hart of all time. Thank you. What other Thank actresses you. have you enjoyed in the role? Okay. And why? Um, well, I, I have to say, when I saw the encores and I saw Anne, I'm talking this, Anne Rankin play the role, um, to me it was the most amazing performance I had ever seen, practically, and it was such a phenomenal performance. She just really embodied the role, and when I saw it, it was, um, it was full and dramatic and free and, and her own thing. You've played such di a div diverse range of characters. Which one was the biggest challenge for you to wrap your head around? It would have to be Javert in Les Mis to, to not make him come off just as a bad guy, but somebody who was really driven by a divine purpose and that, uh, you know, and that he, and, and to really understand that. That was hard. This is from Lauren. Okay. What's been your biggest triumph as a performer and your biggest heartbreak? Well, I have to say my biggest triumph was doing Chicago and Sweet Charity on Broadway at the same time. <laughs> and having two babies at home. That was hard. That, was that hard. may have been more of a challenge for you than for me. I think Because he was. was taking care of the kids most of the time at that point. But um, that would be, I would say, one of the biggest challenges. And then, um, and then one of the biggest heartbreaks was not really being able to, to do Sweet Charity, because ultimately I was understudying that role, and I never really got a chance to do it enough to really feel like it was mine. Um, and then it closed and, you know, whatever. So uh, that, uh, that pains me. I never feel, I felt like I got to do it. And I loved that. It was my favorite role out of all the roles I've ever You still done. like to do that role if you yeah, had a chance? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <sighs> I got it exhausted. Anybody think producing about it. Sweet Charity out there? Yeah, well, no, no, no. This is from Jeremy. Does what happened on stage stay on stage? Or do you discuss things that happen during the show at home? Well, we talk about the show at home all the time afterwards, what worked, what didn't work, what, what could be better, you know. She constantly has copious notes for me. I do. And I, all I tell her is that she's fantastic in <laughs> everything do. that she does. does. <laughs> this is from Sarah. You are in such amazing shape. Thank you. What are your biggest indulgences? Well, honey, maybe you can answer that. Rice Krispies and marshmallows. I made them just the other night and we ate the whole thing. I love chocolate donuts. Um, Intimates, chocolate Intimates. donut. You know what, I eat a lot, and I don't eat that well. I try, but I eat a lot of carbs, because I really love them. So I love pasta. Um, you don't, you eat healthy. I mean, you're not really a meat eater. You don't, you know, don't you don't eat, eat meat. You don't, don't eat she's meat. a vegetarian mostly. Yeah. And, and then donuts. Donuts, I love the chocolate donuts. I'm obsessed with them right now. I'm, I sort of go through a phase. I also like to make cookies and eat cookie dough. I say. When I was pregnant, I ate cookie dough and salami. <laughs> Forget it. Anyway, Honest. okay. I, know, I came in and saw her eating, eating salami, salami and, cookie and cookie dough. Yeah, and she was. And I'm a vegetarian. Pregnant. You have to understand that. And I still have to give. You're pregnant. All bets are off. <laughs> all right. Go. This is Aaron. What went through your mind the first time you met Charlotte? Tell us how you met. Oh well, that is a story to be told. 
um, she was coming into the company of Cats after she'd been on the National Company. And when I knew of her, I knew of her family, I knew of her father, of course, and everybody thought, oh my God, Charlotte Demboise coming in. Here's the legacy of dance coming in, and she's gonna replace and be Cassandra. So we were all, you know, had great expectations, and I met her, and she was very humble and sort of shy, and then we were doing what's called the put-in rehearsal the afternoon before the, her first performance, and I, we were watching, and she was in full costume, and she was dancing beautifully. I mean, she was great. But she was great. She was, and wasn't better than anybody else that right really? then. She oh. was great in the afternoon. The story's changing. Well, but no, anyway. it just gets embellished. Okay. And then that night, um, I, I said, I'm gonna watch her dance the ball. So I went and I sat in the, in the wing, and when it came time for the Jellicle ball, I, I watched her dance, and she had ratcheted the whole thing up uh, by 10 times more. Her energy and her abandonment, and her, but her technique, of dancing and her storytelling as a dancer was just incredible. And we were all mesmerized. And I sat there and went, oh my gosh, I don't think I'll ever be that talented, but uh, maybe I can date it. You two are perfect. What other role would you love to play opposite your talented husband? Ooh, yeah. It actually says the word talented there. Yes, I see. <laughs> I don't know, I, that, I, I really don't know, but I would like to do a play with you. I would Noises like to off. Noise is off. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah, that's a fun play. Okay. I mean, that's okay. Oh. This is from Paul. You are an amazing Charlemagne. Thank you. Thank you. In your opinion, who should be crowned king of Broadway? I have. I know who I would say. Who? I would say Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane. I think so. I would say Nathan Lane. I agree. He does it all, right? Yes. And he's been around, and he's gonna be around. Yes. And he'll never stop, and he he there's nothing he doesn't do. Mm -hmm. Okay, which of Terry's Critters movies is the best and why? <laughs> this was okay. from uh, Todd. Okay, I'd have to say for sure the first one because I never saw the other ones. <laughs> this is from Pat. Yes, hi Pat. What's the funniest audience interaction you had during Cats? Oh uh, yes, I remember th that. I was, um, I go out into the audience as the Rum Tum Tugger during the Rum Tug Tugger, Tugger number and I and I would dance with people in the audience. Well, it got to the point where when I would go out in the audience, I would bring somebody up on stage. And I remember going out into the audience down the ramp during the, during the musical break, and I grabbed this lady who was just jolly and happy and just full of life, and she started screaming, and she stood up, and we danced our way up onto the stage, and I, we were turning, and, and we got our feet tangled, and we fell over. And her dress that she had on kind of flew up above for above her waist and all she had on were pantyhose I'll leave the rest to your imagination <laughs> oh. okay. what was it like to meet Bob Fosse for the first time what do you remember about it oh gosh okay the first time I met him was in uh, 1985 I think and I was I auditioned for sweet charity that was being revived and I remember going all dressed up and and he was it, it was in this theater and he was all the way at the back of the house and he had a hat on and he had a cigarette and it was just him it was dark and and I and there was a piano player and and I sang my song and and then I remember he watched me and I did the scene and then he walked all the way, slowly, 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 to the front of the stage. And he had a cigarette. And I was, I'm telling you, I was like in this little teen mini skirt, this little top, and sassy, sassy. And he said, now I want you to do that again. And I want you to just improvise dance for me. Just improvise. Just. And I was really good at that, because all I did was hang out at Studio 54 and Xenon, and I used to just, that's what I did. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, he, they played it and he just, and they played, I sang the song and then they played the music and I just was like, like flash dance, you know, just all over the stage, whacking it. And he was so nice. And then, and then I remember he kept asking years later, you know, people would come, Bruce Anthony Davis would come to rehearsal and say, Fossey wants to know, are you wild? He wants to know if you, he wants to know about you. He thinks you're crazy and wild. And I thought, okay, well, it's because I was crazy. Okay, what's the best advice you've ever received from your father-in-law, the great Jacques D'Amboise? Wow. You may need a moment to think no, about No, I that. don't. I don't. And I, because he said it to me more than once. Stand up straight. <laughs> and mind you, he doesn't stand up straight. Well, he can't anymore, but he stands up as straight no, as he can. Oh, I don't know. He yeah, didn't stand up. He, he was about always about that. 
stand Terry, up straight. Terry, Terry, stand up straight. Stand up straight. Be tall. Your daughters are so cute. What do they think of having actors for parents? Oh, God, I don't know. Do they want to be performers? What advice would you give them if they do? Ha, huh, I don't know what they think. I think one daughter thinks it's great and I think the other one's embarrassed by it. I, I would be happy if whatever they choose to do. I want them to do whatever they want to do and w would love to do, whether it's, you know, working in an ice cream store or being an actor yeah. or being a doctor. I want them to love what they do. I don't know, I worry about it all the time. Yeah. I remember asking um, one of my daughters, you know, from school, have you guys ever talk about other parents, your parents? What do you, what do you say about us? Huh? What do you say about us? You know, because you know, I'm, I'm thinking wrong. She goes, oh, yeah, yeah, that we talk about them, you know, but you guys, you guys are you, you're just dumb old actors. <laughs> from Jim Dale to Angela Lansbury, you've worked with so many Broadway legends. Which one uh, were you most starstruck by? Oh. This is a good one. Well, yeah, I'll tell you a very quick story. I was doing my first Broadway show, which was Barnum, which was going to be opening at the St. James Theater. And I remember before it opened, I remember getting the job about, you know, three months before we were going to open. And I walked down to the theater just to look at it. And there was a, a, a play called Phil Yumina playing uh, there. And um, this was 1980. And, uh, uh, and uh, it was starring Joan Plowright. And uh, I remember looking, looking at the theater, being so, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on Broadway. And I remember the stage door, and I kind of opened the stage door. And there was a guy sitting at the desk, and he goes, can I help you? And I go, oh, um, no, I, I'm sorry. He says, no, 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 come in, come in, come in. You know, they don't hear about you. And I go, oh, okay. And he says, what's your name? I say, well, my, my name's T Terry, Terry Mann. And he says, Carlo, my name's Carlo. I'm the doorman here. And I, I said, well, I'm, I'm going to be going into this theater. But we're going to be doing Barnum. Oh, congratulations, congratulations. Is your, is your first Broadway show? I went, yes, it's going to be my first Broadway show. And he went, oh, oh, he goes, and he went, he went, he went, Larry, 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 look, this first, this young man, it's his first Broadway show. And I turn, I walk around the corner, and there sitting on these steps was this man with a trench coat and a hat. And he stood up about five steps up the, the stairs. And, as he, and he stood up, so I'm looking at him like this. And he stood up and he looked down at me and went, congratulations, young man. And it was Laurence Olivier, who was sitting on the steps waiting for his wife, Joan Plowright, to finish her performance. That's a great story. And I you walked were out of there and I was walking about six feet off the ground the rest of the night. I loved you in the role of the conniving and sly Fistrata. It reminded me a lot of your previous role as Chris in Carrie, the musical. What was it like being in such a famous cult musical? Well, Carrie was, um, it was a long time ago, and it was a great experience, in, in, and, but a difficult one. And it was like the first experience of being in a real flop, which is, you know, where you, you, you put all your heart and soul in something, and then it, you get smashed down. So it, it, you sort of learn from that. And um, so it was an incredible experience uh, up until we had to close, which was two weeks. We, we opened, we didn't, actually we closed in a weekend. I think it was only two days. So, um, but it was a great experience. Okay, what is your spirit circus animal? A hippogriff. <laughs> it's the uh, animal that's half eagle, half horse from uh, Harry Potter. Oh, that's because you're reading Harry Potter with yes. the girls. <laughs> from oh, Jimmy. Goodness. Jimmy, okay, Jimmy. You're such a beautiful dancer. Who is your all-time favorite dance partner? Ooh, my brother. Hands down. Christopher D'Amboise. Yep. I danced with him in Song and Dance. We did kind of an incestuous dance. People thought we were married, not brother and sister. But anyway, loved that. And I, I've danced with him a lot in my life. And uh, there's nothing like dancing with him. Thank you for the questions. Please come and see Pippin. And uh, we love doing this and love talking to you. It was lots of fun. Thanks. Fun, fun, fun. Bye. Bye.